Hello there and welcome! This is a video tutorial on how to use the Rimkulib on the Windows operating system. Now in this segment, we're going to show how to easily control microcontroller peripherals on a common MCU development board from a customary personal computer. But we will not be developing a firmware and communication protocol for command transmission. We will just work with the chip peripherals on our C++ and Python programs as if these peripherals were part of the computer. Actually, all of this has become possible thanks to a RIMQ project. The RIMQ library gives access to a Windows application to microcontroller hardware through the interface as peripheral drivers of the software package provided by semiconductor vendors or third parties for firmware development. The library translates to a local driver function call on the computer to a remote call of the same driver function on the chip using a communication or debug interface. You can see a description of the RIMQ lib and other tutorials on the website remotemcu.com. In this demonstration, we will use the RIMQ lib which implements an API of standard peripheral library. It is a vendor software development kit provided by ST Microelectronics Company for writing firmware of STM microcontrollers. You can see detailed information about the standard peripheral library on st.com. There is documentations and samples which are useful for working with an STM32 chip. In this tutorial, we're going to be using an STM32 F4 discovery board. All examples are designed to work with this device, but they can be adapted to run on other STM32 boards without difficulty. You can download them from the GitHub repository. The first app is an acceleration versus time graph maker which captures data from the onboard MEMS sensor. Another application is a CAN bus analyzer. And the third example is a Jupyter Notebook script with Python code which works with the GPIO, ADC, and PWM module of microcontroller. Now let's get to running them. First, download the GitHub repository and unpack the archive. You need the RIMQ library to build the examples. It can be found on the download page of remotemcu.com site. Type STM32F4 Discovery in the MCU name field, then choose Standard Peripheral Library and version 1.1.0. Download the archive of the Windows version and extract it to the first example directory. Open the Excel graph project using the Qt Creator IDE. If you don't have a Qt Creator, install it before that. In order to build this example, you'll be required to install the Qt Charts component, MinGW64 bit toolchain, and Qt Prebuilt for MSVC and MinGW. We recommend choosing the toolchain MSVC 2015 and higher or MinGW version 7.3.0 and higher. This tool chain should be of a 64-bit version. All right, now let's build and run the application. All right, the application has started. We have downloaded the community version of the RIMQ library. This version works only with an open OCD or GDB server for connecting to a microcontroller. The discovery board contains an ST-Link debugger which works with the open OCD and ST-Link GDB server utility from Atalic True Studio IDE. You can download a pre-built open OCD package from the MCU Eclipse repository. Now download the archive and extract it. 
Connect the development board to your computer and run the OpenOCD utility with the required options. OK, now the Rimku library can connect to an onboard STM chip and interact with it. Go ahead and press the Connect button now. The program starts capturing the acceleration data and builds the charts. If you run into some trouble while trying to launch these examples, see the troubleshooting page on our site or issues page on the GitHub repository. I would like to note that we didn't load any specific firmware into the microcontroller. Our program just works directly with the I2C peripheral block of the STM chip using the driver functions of the standard peripheral library. Also, interfacing code with onboard accelerometer have been taken from the MEMS sample of the peripheral library. The RIMCU lib translates all local driver function calls to remote calls of the same driver functions on the STM chip using a debug interface. Usually to communicate with an I2C device, one uses a USB I2C converter. In this case, the SDM chip acts as that converter. But unlike a highly specialized converter, a microcontroller has great potential and a rich number of peripherals. Let's test another communication protocol of STM32. The second example covers CAN bus peripherals. It has a similar build process as the previous example. Repeat the steps above and run the example app. The CAN bus requires a CAN transceiver to work. We have a board with the TGA1050 chip for this. For testing, we can use a USB to CAN adapter. Build a CAN network using this scheme. Let's test the ST-Link GDB server utility instead of OpenOCD. Install Italic True Studio for STM32 and go to the Italic IDE directory. Then servers, stlink gdb server, then run the stlink gdb server.bat script. Well, this console window shows that the debug server is running and listening on the 61234 port. You should type this port number in the text field of the running app. Press the Connect button, and the program is ready to receive and transmit CAN messages. Run the special application for working with the CAN to USB adapter. Set baud rates to 125 kilobits per second. Now let's send a message from the example application. Nice! The adapter has received the message. Okay. Let's receive a message in the example application. Great! It works as a full-featured CAN bus analyzer. As an important note, the Rimku lib is a simple dynamic library. It does not depend on the Qt frameworks and Qt Creator. You can add the Rimku library as a Visual Studio project or other IDEs and frameworks, and even use it with a Python interpreter. A Python interpreter lets us run the driver functions on the go. In this way, you could control the MCU in real time. With this tool, you can also easily conduct amazing experiments on chips, peripherals, and microcontroller-based devices. It saves a lot of time that is usually spent on the development of experimental MCU firmware. The interactive work with the chips' peripherals helps us to explore new hardware blocks quicker. In addition, for your convenience, we prepared a particular Python wrapper containing all necessary constants and structures 
which makes it possible to use the standard peripheral library function, just like with C or C++ code. Also, we can provide wrappers for the RIMCU library on other high-level languages like c -sharp, Java, and others. Let's try that. Install the Anaconda distribution. We recommend using Python version 2. Go to the example directory and copy the RIMCU library there. Run the Anaconda Navigator app. And then run the Jupyter Notebook IDE. Open the sample script. Connect the board to a personal computer and run OpenOCD or STLink GDB utility with the required options as we have done before. The script has detailed comments. Let's run it and see the results. This code was taken directly from the I.O. toggle samples of standard peripheral library. It configures GPIO as an output port. Flash on all of the LEDs now. OK, and flash them off now. Well, if it didn't happen, you can use the utility functions to detect errors. The getErrorCount function returns the number of errors that occurred after connection. This isConnected function indicates the status of the current debug server connection. Some of these debug adapters can have hardware problems. The debugger test function enables us to detect such adapters. The function returns a null pointer if the test is successful. Working with GPIO is interesting, of course. But how about we test our intellect and try something much harder? Let's test the timer module. This code is guided by the PWM output sample. Set PWM mode for timer 4. Now you can control the duty cycle and adjust the brightness of the board's LEDs. The Jupyter Notebooks is not just a static document. It has some fantastic dashboards, perfect for exploring and visualizing data. So let's use it. Create two controls for changing LED brightness. Setting this up is actually pretty easy. OK. The last sketch takes ADC data from the microcontroller and visualizes it in this notebook in real time. Plug a variable resistor into the PC2 pin and run these snippets. The embedded canvas plots ADC value or voltage versus time graph. Well, the RIMQ lib provides not only API of standard peripheral library for working with STM chips, it can also implement other interfaces like HAL, Embed, Arduino, and others. And furthermore, there are versions of RIMQ lib for other chips, including 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit microcontrollers, and 64-bit systems on a chip. In case you have not found a community version of RIMQ for a certain library or chip, just leave a message on our website or write an email. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions on these examples, you can raise an issue in the GitHub repository, or go ahead and send us an email about your questions on the RIMQ lib.